Good morning again and happy holidays. There are two breaking stories this morning. First, a Metro North commuter train derailed in New York City. So far, so far, four people have died and more than 60 are injured, some of them critically. No word yet on what caused the derailment. Also today, the Obama administration says dramatic progress has been made to the healthcare.gov website. To talk about that and last week's agreement to halt Iran's nuclear weapons program in exchange for some loosening of the economic sanctions, I'm joined by the two top senators on the Foreign Relations Committee. Democrat Chairman Bob Menendez of New Jersey joins us from New York, and the ranking Republican Bob Corker of Tennessee joins us from Chattanooga. Good morning to both of you. Senator Menendez, I want to start with you. The administration says healthcare.gov is doing better. They've met uh, their goals. Do you have confidence that that's the case? Well, the announcement today that uh, response rates are under a second, error rates are under 1%, 90% of the time, the system's stable. It can uh, uh, handle 50,000 uh, users, 800,000 visits a day. If that's uh, the case, then uh, that's, that's good news. Because what this really is about uh, is the technology challenges, but I think what we've lost sight of is that the underlying program itself, the product, uh, the health insurance that Americans will be able uh, to access is critically important. So this is the equivalent of having a, a great item that you want to buy in a store but not being able to get through the front door. It sounds like the front door has been opened uh, successfully now and hopefully we're going to have Americans get access to that health care they desperately need. Senator Corker, you know something about construction. The front door is fixed but there are other issues here in the system. There was a delay uh, before the Thanksgiving holiday from the White House on the small business portion of the Affordable Care Act. There have been other issues. The insurance industry says there are delays getting good information from the website, which means you won't actually be able to get a plan if those errors continue. So uh, where is your confidence on this getting back on some kind of a track? Well, look, there are thousands of entities around the country that uh, easily could have set this up with $600 million in three years. But look, I'm, for all that, we all get calls from incredibly distressed citizens who've had their policies canceled and yet are unable to enroll in a new plan. So I do hope that the efficacy of this is much better today and will improve. But at the end of the day, while there will be a few winners, most Americans are going to find a less dynamic health system they're going to find that the cost of the health care that they, they're able to purchase is going to be a lot higher. And they're also going to realize that their choices are for less, far less. And so for our country, uh, you're going to have continued downward pressure on employment. You're going to have upward pressure on deficits. And so I still think the foundations of this plan have some of the same kinds of problems that the rollout has had, but they're fundamental, very hard to, uh, to overcome. And unfortunately, as people enroll, I think there's going to be a lot of negative surprises as to what they're able to enroll in. So repeal it, Senator Corker? Well, look, I, I, this is one of those things when you try to fix one piece, it affects another piece. For instance, uh, the president's uh, move, which you know I'm glad he was trying to fix uh, the promise that he made regarding people being able to stay on their plans. If that's the case, then you have this situation where potentially a death spiral ends up occurring and you end up having increasing costs for those people who do, in fact, enroll in the new system. So I don't know how you fix the many fundamental problems of this program. I'm a strong supporter of dynamic marketplace exchanges. I do think we need to equalize uh, the tax code so that if you buy it individually, you get the same benefits that you do through a company where it's tax free. So I think there, there are things that need to be done, and I think there are some elements that could be built upon, but generally speaking, the fundamentals of this to me are were done in a way, a chaotic way, much like we're seeing the rollout. Uh, it was done in a way that really, there wasn't a vision at the end, it was just an amalgamation of, of legislation that didn't have a central focus, and so I don't know how you fix it, I'll be honest. I don't know how you fix a program that was put together in this manner with only one side of the aisle and taking the shortcuts that we're taking to put it in place. Senator Menendez, before we move on to Iran, I just want to ask you one question. You used to be charged with helping get Democratic senators elected or reelected. So give us your political take quickly on uh, how much of a weight the whole health care rollout and its difficulty will be on Democratic senators trying to get reelected or trying to win office in 2014. 
Well, look, I think when we, we get to the period of time at the end of the year, similar to the Massachusetts plan, when it was rolled out, enrollment figures weren't great at the beginning. Everybody waited towards the end, and that was a success. Uh, I look at New Jersey, and I think it's a replication of, the, of, of what's uh, out there for the nation. 70, uh, you know, uh, 73,000 young people are on their parents' insurance because of the new law. Uh, you know, 1.5 million uh, women in New Jersey are getting uh, additional health care benefits uh, as it relates to their personal health. Uh, senior citizens have saved uh, $470 million in prescription drug benefits. Three and a half million New Jerseyans no longer face uh, some lifetime arbitrary cap when they have a major illness. So uh, if that's a replica of what is happening uh, across the country, I think that senators are going to be uh, in a great position to say, you know, look, we are doing dramatic changes that help you be able to meet the challenges for your family of health care uh, and eliminate some of the greatest uh, evils that existed under the previous system where you could have a pre-existing condition and be denied health care. You All could right. be born at birth with a disability and be denied health care. Uh, you could have a major illness and face that lifetime cap and now suddenly lose everything you ever worked for. These are okay. the advantages of the program no one speaks about. Okay, Senator Menendez, let's switch to Iran. You said that the White House on this important deal with Iran was fear-mongering. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, I think that what, what bothered me was a statement made by Jake Harney that the, those of us who have been advocates of prospective sanctions, sanctions that would take place six months later, uh, after uh, this time period of negotiations would be had and would be there to be enforced if the deal fell through uh, and would in essence be stayed if there was a deal uh, that suggesting that that uh, thought uh, was somehow marching us off to war uh, was way over the top because as one of the architects of the sanctions regime we've had on Iran, uh, this is exactly the process that has brought Iran to the negotiating table. And so while we've heard naysayers in the past say, no, we shouldn't pursue those sanctions, it seems to me that prospectively looking for sanctions that are invoked six months from a date of enactment that give the president certain waivers, therefore creates the flexibility for diplomacy also sends a message to Iran, as it has throughout this process, that there is a consequence if you don't strike a successful deal and puts us in a position of having the insurance to have additional sanctions go into effect at that time and at the same time gives the administration the flexibility to negotiate. So I think that's a very responsible position. Senator Corker, I want to ask you about this interim arrangement and agreement. The administration, Secretary of State Kerry says, look, this halts the Iranian program. And if the Iranians don't keep their commitments, the sanctions come back and maybe even some, some harder ones or stiffer ones. So what's not to like in the agreement? Well, I think it's really difficult, uh, and I, won't, I want to say this is felt in a very strong bipartisan way. It's very difficult to understand that at the height of our leverage, uh, we, had six we had six countries negotiating and the world behind us we negotiated a deal of this nature with not a single centrifuge being dismantled, all of them spinning in perpetuity for the next six months. And I think that uh, it's hard to see how you get to a place that meets the standard uh, that, we'd want, that we would want to meet at the end. And so I'm very concerned, especially with this interim deal, how we get to a place where Iran is not enriching constantly or where they're right on the verge, always, of being able to, to break out and create a nuclear weapon. I, I have strong concerns about the proliferation that's going to occur in the area as people see this rogue nation being dealt with in this manner and basically us validating them over the next six months. So again, um, I, I know Senator Menendez and I both will be working to try to figure out some way of ensuring that we get to the appropriate end game. And it'll be up to Senator Reid to decide whether we have that opportunity in the, over, on the floor of the next two or three weeks or whether he's going to continue to block for the administration so that that doesn't occur. But I do hope this is something Senator Menendez has done an outstanding job on. I give him credit, he and Senator Kirk. We put ourselves, our nation, in this place. And I think that Congress has played a very constructive role and can, if allowed, over the next several months. I hope we'll be able to. So, Senator Menendez, let me ask you that question. What constructive role can Congress play here? The White House seems like it doesn't even want 
uh, any piece of legislation, even if it didn't kick in for six months, they don't want that. What's Leader Reid going to do? What's the next move? Well, look, I think uh, creating a sanctions regime that is an insurance policy and also creates leverage for us is uh, incredibly important. Uh, I'm concerned about some elements of the text that people haven't focused on. For example, uh, already in that text, as it relates to what is defined as a comprehensive solution, there's some suggestion that we are going to define what a mutually agreeable enrichment program is. So we've already ceded away from UN Security Council resolutions that say no enrichment. Secondly, uh, there is the ability to extend this interim agreement uh, and to deal with the UN Security Council resolutions. Well, unless you're going to deal them away, uh, I don't know what there is to deal. The Security Council resolutions call, uh, call for ceasing enrichment. And lastly, uh, there is a provision here uh, that envisions in a comprehensive solution a sunset clause uh, that would say that after a period of time, which is not defined, that uh, the Iranians would be treated as any non-nuclear weapons state. Uh, that means that they could, after that period of time, enrich uranium without any consequence and without any limitations. They could seek a plutonium track without any limitations. Those are real concerns. So defining both what the end state is as well as having a uh, sanctions regime that is uh, ready to go should the deal not fall through. Now, I, I hope the deal can be successful. Obviously, diplomacy is something we want to see work, but we need to be ready to move forward. Senator Corker, is it a uh, red line for you, you talked about the standards of any ultimate deal. Is enrichment of any kind by Iran, is that uh, something everybody should stay focused on, that any deal that includes that is a non-starter for you? Because, of course, the Iranians say that they expect to be able to keep enriching. Yeah. So to me, that's a, a baseline that the UN Security Council has agreed to, I think, six times. Certainly this administration negotiated that in 2010. So as long as they can enrich, uh, it seems to me that we are violating the very standards that we set in place in the first place. So, so yes, I think enrichment uh, for a country, especially like Iran, that is shown to have secret programs, has, has been seen to be a rogue nation. Their ability to enrich really throws into uh, disarray, if you will, all the other agreements that we're negotiating around the world with Vietnam, with South Korea, with other countries that have played by the rules in, in some cases. So. I think it throws the proliferation issue uh, into disarray also. So, so yes, to me, that is something that, that cannot exist. Um, but, but look, we, we don't even address uh, their ballistic testing issues. There are so many issues in this next six months that are not addressed. As a matter of fact, some people have said Iran may wish to cheat over the next six months. I see no way that they're going to want to cheat. This is a total victory from their standpoint. I think they're going to be good actors over the next six months because they see an administration who led this uh, negotiation, an administration that has already given tilt to allowing them to do the things that the world community through the UN Security Council has already said they okay. cannot do. So I'm very discouraged and I hope we're able to, to have a better end game than it looks like we're going to have now. All right. And I think Congress can help us get there. Senator Corker, thank you so much. We're going to have to end it there. Thank Senator you. Menendez, thank you for being with us. Thank you. We'll be back in one minute.